Thank you very much. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking about screening for cancer using serum microRNA neural networks. Uh, and as was mentioned, I'm the director of the GYN Oncology Laboratory at the Brigham. I'm a surgeon. I don't know how many surgeons are in the room. And one of the things about being a surgeon is your goal when you're a cancer surgeon is to either not find cancer or to be able to find cancer that you can actually cure by removing it, which unfortunately for most of the diseases I treat is not usually the case. So let's talk about modern cancer screening. If you're a woman showing up in my clinic, modern cancer screening is a really fragmented process. A woman has to go through multiple clinician visits, undergo multiple procedures, take multiple days off work. The testing is extremely inefficient. Thousands of tests are going to be conducted to identify one case of cancer at a cost of billions of dollars to the healthcare system. And there's no screening for many common types of cancer. So given the example of a woman in my office, for her pap smear, she goes to her gynecologist to screen for cervical cancer. For her breast cancer screening, she has to see a radiologist for a mammogram. Then she takes another day off work to have a colonoscopy with a gastroenterologist. And then for uterine cancer, which is the most common GYN cancer in the United States and Europe, there is no screening available. And for ovarian cancer, which is the most common cause of gynecologic cancer death in the developed world, there is no screening available. So for the two most common diseases that I see and that cause virtually all the deaths that I see, there is no screening. And for the other common cancers that I often deal with, uh, patients are taking days off work and thousands of women are undergoing negative tests to identify single cases of cancer. Now, in my own laboratory, we've been looking at serum microRNAs and showing how they can stratify risks for multiple cancer types. The way that this works is we take a simple blood sample, a red top tube, like would be used for any routine laboratory chemistry test. We extract microRNAs using a fairly simple technique, and we use a multiplexed platform where we can detect up to 68 microRNAs in a thimble full of blood in a 96 well plate. These are coded with a barcode using hydrogel probes, and we can pick out the levels of individual microRNAs from the sample using a flow cytometry-based technique combined with PCR. We then feed this into a neural network algorithm that we identified, and we can provide a risk estimate for multiple different cancer types. We published this with regards to ovarian cancer a couple years ago, showing how our neural network compared to CA125, which is the most commonly used biomarker for ovarian cancer. What was interesting about that was in our network development, we specifically loaded the assay with stage one cancers in equal part to advanced stage cancers, and we also powered the test to be able to discriminate between stage one lesions and non-invasive or borderline tumors. As you can see, it significantly outperformed CA125. Now, of course, this was in the training set. There was both a validation and a training set on this one. But the question people always ask is, how early can you detect these lesions? So we've modeled that in animals. The way that that works is we take transgenic mice. We take a serum sample on the mouse for serum microRNA analysis. We can do this with 10 microliters of mouse serum. We then induce cancer in the mouse, and then using serial blood samples on the mouse, we look to see when the sample shows signs of a tumor developing, and then remove the tube and ovary from the mouse. As you can see, hopefully with the red dots at the top, that's showing tumors from a mouse that are one one hundredth of an inch in diameter. And the equivalent human tumor is shown below, which would be a serous tubal intraepithelial carcinoma, or the nascent ovarian cancer in a human sample, which is on the order of microns. So we think we can examine tubes and ovaries and find them when they're abnormal before a woman has any clinical or radiographic signs of disease. The other thing about our neural networks is that they're cancer type specific. So we took our neural network and we can applied it to a completely independent data set generated by another group, which included six other types of cancer and six competing diagnoses. And it picked out ovarian cancer specifically against any other cancer type with a positive predictive value of 100% and a negative predictive value of 99.78%. Now this is true if you apply it to different cancer types as well. So the ovarian cancer neural network will only pick out ovarian cancer. A prostate neural network will only pick out prostate cancer. You can run both neural networks simultaneously on the same sample and provide a cancer risk estimate for both cancer types. So we've seen, as we've applied it across the cancer spectrum, that each cancer has a unique microRNA pattern. 
So I showed you the data for ovarian cancer. This is applying the similar technique to prostate cancer compared to PSA. And this is applying a similar technique to colon cancer compared to a published colon cancer data set. In both the prostate and the colon cancer example, I'm comparing it to the ROC curve that was published in the paper that we took the data set from. And we have validated this approach across species. We've done it in macaques, we've done it in mice, we've done it in baboons. In non-human primate models, we can predict the development of cancer a year before an animal has any signs of disease after an oncogenic exposure. So we believe that we can apply this across cancer types. Specifically, we've been most interested in looking at ovarian cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic, prostate, and colon cancer, as well as gastric, esophageal, liver, and renal cancer. We think that using a single blood sample with those 68 microRNAs that we can profile simultaneously, we can screen for up to 10 common types of cancer at one go. Now, with the support from the Invasion Discovery Grant, what we've been able to do is to turn this into a cloud computing platform. So we've taken our algorithm and we've put it into a platform that a reference laboratory could log into. They could batch upload in a .csv file data generated by an in-house laboratory. It would be analyzed by our neural network in the cloud. And then within minutes, the reference laboratory would receive batches of individualized patient reports. And an example is given here. So it has an explanation of the assay, lists the laboratory results, and provides a precise risk estimate for each type of cancer for that individual. So examining the serum screening marketplace, so in the bar graphs, what you're looking at on the left side is the total cost of cancer to the European Union, and on the other side is the entire European Union budget. So Europe will go bankrupt from cancer within the next decade, essentially, because they're spending more money on cancer than the entire EU is uh, currently budgeting to run the entire block. If you look at the United States, the risk of cancer increases with age, and right now there are 140 million Americans over 45 years old. That number will increase to 170 million by 2050. And what's going to happen is that payers will be forced to adopt new technologies to diagnose cancer earlier, when it's more treatable and the treatments are more affordable. So as a conservative cost of $100 per test, which provides a 50% margin on what it costs us to actually do this, we're estimating a $14 billion market per year in the United States alone. So why use microRNAs? Well, for one thing, they're very easy to isolate. Uh, we can amplify trace quantities. As I said, this technique combines PCR techniques along with flow cytometry. The rapid they have very rapid analysis time. We can go from a sample to a report in three hours. They're more stable than protein or DNA. You could ship these things in the post and they'll be fine for several days at room temperature. There's no dry ice needed. They're more sensitive than circulating tumor cells, which really only work for advanced stage diseases. And it's much less expensive than other modalities. There's no sequencing that's required here to make this work. So moving the serum microRNA screening to market, while we already have a high throughput pipeline in place, we have a robotic system in the laboratory, we already have patents filed for the analytic approach, what we need are to analyze more samples from more types of cancer. Like any machine learning, the system gets smarter the more information that we feed it. We do need a commercial partner in diagnostics. And we're hoping to initiate longitudinal studies in high-risk patients. Our next step is by the end of the calendar year, we're hoping to initiate a clinical trial in women with BRCA1 and 2 mutations for all BRCA-associated malignancies. And so what we're looking at is changing the face of cancer screening. So going back to the original example, we're hoping to make this a single clinician visit with one routine blood draw, drawn with all the other routine blood labs. There's a low cost per case identified. It works in low resource settings. As long as you can draw blood, you can run this test. And we can screen for many common cancers with no currently available screening tests. So now we're looking at rather than multiple visits to multiple physicians, a single visit to any physician, and one blood sample to get data on all these different points. I'll be available in the back if anyone has any questions, and thank you.